Okay, here we are again. Hi guys, this is Out of Nowhere. Today we are going to make our outputs nodes. We are going to focus inside our graph view. And this is going to be a pretty easy part. You just need to make your outputs. So with this icon you can make an output. The first it's going to be a base color so you you can just name it with the proper name I am going to copy and paste it inside the label as you can see the outputs of our base material are already there but we are going to make some changes the base color it is going to be okay as it is for the normal channel also we are going to need our single output we are going to call it normal map copy and paste inside the label now i am going to duplicate the normal map because i want to make as i have already said the opengl version so i am going to call it normal map ogl simple as that and for these two outputs we are going to need our normal maps which are inside the map generation frame so we can use the normal map the first normal map which is direct x as you can see here in the bottom right and the other one is opengl so we can use that also so we have our maps here and that's cool i'm going to move this a little bit downwards because we are going to need some space to merge our other maps which are roughness metalness ambient occlusion and height and we are going to merge it inside a single map so let's make our output and for this map we are going to press spacebar and search for RGB. As you can see in here you have RGBA merge, so we load it in. And we are going to hook up the roughness to the first channel, metalness to the second channel, ambient occlusion to the third channel and height to the last channel. And this odd texture that you see here contains all the maps that we need inside a single packet map R M A H R M A H so you have indication of which maps are where so the are for roughness metalness and inclusion and height and now we have our maps ready to be exported we just need to click with the right mouse button and we can select then export output as bitmap we can just export it into substance tutorial select folder and as you can see here the software the software is going to use the graph name an underscore and the identifier of the texture which is this base color normal map etc and then you need to select the format that you like I usually use the TGA because it keeps a lot of information and then we can click in export outputs now in this part I wanted to show you how to create your custom nodes so this is what we are going to do first thing I want to create my single strand node and then I want to create my radial pattern custom node with the strands inside like this 
and I want to be able to modify the settings just selecting that node. The first part is pretty easy, you just need to select the part of the graph that you want to, let's say, duplicate, okay? So I want the single strand with the deformations, so I will select the first part of this graph, right click over it and select create graph from selection. I'm going to name it single strand and hit OK. And then I want also to export my bigger graph. I select all and click also create graph from selection and I will call this radial strand. As you can see in here we have the new graphs so we can double click on it and as you can see there is only that part of the graph that we have selected. I am just going to make a couple of changes. First thing, I'm going to make uh, two packages. I want to put the single strand inside the first package and the radial strand inside the other package. Then I am going to save the single strand. Same thing for the radial strand. The cool part of this process is that if we go into edit and preferences, we can select projects and then library. And as you can see, I have already loaded my path, which is going to extend my default library content. So let's do it again. If we click on the little plus button, we can then select a folder. For me, it is Documents Algorithmic Substance Designer. And I will click on Select Folder, and there it is. And that's all. With OK. The cool part of this process is that now, if we add in the library window a new folder, we can right click and edit and rename this to custom nodes and with this folder selected we can now create a new filter what this filter will do is search for all the substances that fall within these parameters so i am going to call these strands the project is going to be the user project that's okay and in the left menu we are going to select graph base name we are going to change this to url and contains it's okay then you want to go into your folder and copy the address of your folder so just right click in here and select copy and we are going to paste it right here and hit enter. Here they are, radial strand and single strand. I want to add another filter down here. So if you extend the window, we are going to see the plus button. So add item and we are going to select again graph, base name contains and type strand. So we are going to see only the substances that have strand in their names, okay? Now we are good to go. A couple of things. First, you want to double click in the empty space and make sure that your output size is set to relative to parent. This is a must, otherwise you are going to have problems with your resolution when you use this in another substance. Delete the variations that we don't need anymore and focus on our output so we select the last node and click in the output button so a new output is going to appear and we want to expose some settings of our gaussian noise because that is driving the deformation of our single strand so we want to expose our disorder hit ok and we want to expose our scale the last thing that we are going to do is make a snapshot for Substance Designer to show here, right here, in the node. 
I'm going to make a transformation to the node. I want the strand to occupy all the space inside my snapshot. So this is cool. Now we can click on save current image as bitmap. Now we can delete that node, we don't need it anymore. And if we double click on our root node, so in the empty space, and we scroll down in the properties, we are going to find the icon button. So if you click right here, we can then load our strand icon. And we can now save our strand SPS. And as you can see, Substance Designer updated our node. So as you can see, we have now the node ready and this is usable. So we can now close this uh, package and the node is going to remain there. Just close this window and let's work on our radius strand. We are going to make the same thing that we have done before, but we are going to delete these bottom nodes because we don't need any more these variations in here. We're going to do that inside our single node, with single custom node. So we need these. And before we have made our single strand, so if we want, we can delete also this part of the graph and use instead our single strand node. Load in the single strand that we have made and we have our parameters so we can use that parameters and we can make duplicates of it so we are going to make three variations and hook this up in the splatter circular so we are going to make the variations in here And as you can see, now we have a much more cleaner graph. We can also expose the parameters of the splatter circular, the parameters that we need to edit inside our custom node. So I want to expose the pattern amount. Then let's see, I want to expose also the ring amount. Let's call it ring amount, it's okay. We want to expose our main radius. So expose. Then let's see also the spread. Then I want to expose the size of the single strands. Master size. Okay, the scale random scale random and I think that we are good to go let me see okay for now we are going to stick with these settings the last thing that we I want to expose because at last we have a warp and it is driven by a Gaussian noise I'm going to expose the disorder and I will call this last deformation disorder same as before double click on your empty space and set the root node output size to relative to parent and make our output node and we're going to make also the icon Okay, and now we can save our snapshot, yes, and in the root node we can load our icon, we have all our settings, we now can save the substance, save it, and this is going to update pretty soon, here it is, so we have a radial strand and single strand, and these two are usable inside the other graphs. So let's try that now. We can load in again our most tutorial material. Here it is. Just preview our channels. Tessellation, scale, factor, 
sphere to tile. So instead of using these now, we in fact can just load in our radio strand, make three duplicates, and use these as our main input inside our graph. We can make the changes here and everything is going to update accordingly. You can play with the spread and all the settings that we have exposed. In a future tutorial, I will show you how to load in our custom input inside our radio strand so we can change the strand shape and load in directly inside our custom node. I hope uh, this is helpful. If you need to know some more, let me know in the comments. And if you like it, hit that button. And we see you in the next tutorials. Bye guys!